For more than a century, the American education system had left many students feeling like victims of mass hypnosis from their learning experiences. Mired by overstandardization, too much emphasis on passive consumption, and a reliance on teachers to share knowledge. While our current system was fashioned in the image of learning in the industrial age, we've seen a shift beginning to occur in the last 20 years or so. Constructivist learning models began to take hold in modern classrooms, but the limitations of technology prevented this shift from taking hold in distance education. In 1995, a renaissance in distance education began thanks to a man named Murray Goldberg at the University of British Columbia. Frustrated by cumbersome tasks in his research, he developed a rapid course production environment, which over the next year evolved into a program called WebCT. Little did Murray know how quickly it would become the catalyst to spark a great explosion in online learning. Soon after, two Cornell students developed a course management system called Course Info. Leveraging the power of a database, the system could take on a larger management role and provide permission-based control of course delivery. Seeing the potential in this new idea, a young company called Blackboard merged with Course Info. Internet use was growing by leaps and bounds, allowing users to break free from the chains of routine consumption and freely navigate the web as they please. The learning systems of this time were able to capitalize on that usability, which along with the growing ubiquity of internet access was largely responsible for the explosive growth of the web and online learning. As a new century dawned, the open source movement that had produced incredible new web technologies like MySQL and Netscape began to be adopted by the education community. The result was the creation of a community of educators sharing in ideas and resources that has evolved into what we now know today as open educational resources and personal learning networks. CMS systems like Moodle and Sakai were created to support a collaborative model of teaching and learning that provided educators the ability to customize the learning environment and students to contribute to it. This was largely supported by major developments in web standards and the growing popularity of PHP, Java, and XML. This was the beginning of Web 2.0. Search technologies like Google and Yahoo had helped to make the public more proficient at finding this information, but for the most part the general public was still just consuming information, not creating it. Web 2.0 changed all of that, with a flurry of innovation that changed the landscape of learning dramatically. Familiar web technologies began to develop more interactive features, and new ones appeared daily. The idea behind Web 2.0 shattered the accepted modes of content creation and delivery, which until this time were mostly provided by the elite of society, including academics, the media, governments, and increasingly corporations. Still, during this time, many course management systems were struggling to keep up with the changing pace of technology, weighed down by legacy code from the 90s. They provided robust course management, but substandard tools for teaching and learning. Their focus was on assessment and student management, not content creation and instructional models. Their open source counterparts were driving a shift in course management towards a focus on collaborative learning. However, the open source community struggled due to the fear on the part of many schools to adopt bleeding edge technologies without a corporate support infrastructure. Another revolution occurred in 2004 when a young hacker and student at Harvard named Mark Zuckerberg created Facebook. At first only available to Harvard students, Facebook soon expanded to several other universities and eventually high schools growing rapidly as students around the country flooded the gates. In 2006, Facebook opened to the general public and a social networking revolution began. With the advent of social networking, it soon became apparent that true social learning was now possible in a virtual environment, and another boom in online education began to take shape. Yet still, course management systems hadn't changed much since the beginning of the decade. Despite modest advances in automation, usability, aesthetics, and the integration of open standards, the general philosophy had not changed. The CMS was still considered by most to be the center of the online academic universe. In the last couple of years, waves of new web tools have emerged, embracing a new philosophy of openness. The culture of open has taken hold online and is not letting go. This shift has provided educators with countless options to pick and choose the tools that work for them and provide students with the ability to personalize their own learning environments. 
So what does this mean for the future of course management, and how does that impact higher education? Even today, the CMS is considered the holy grail of online learning, even though it is becoming more and more apparent that they provide a rigid environment that forces instructors to work around substandard tool sets and outdated pedagogical frameworks. However, these systems do have a place in the virtual learning environments of the future. The CMS of the future should be thought of as the central piece in a large puzzle. It will be the portal by which students access all the tools that make up their personal learning environments. Some of these tools will be chosen by the instructors, and some will be chosen by the students themselves. The CMS should be a bridge that connects students and instructors to the tools that work best for them, the same tools they will be using in their careers. It can no longer be the one-size-fits-all environment in which students learn. This is impractical and provides no real-world application. Rather, it should be an open learning network. An open learning network is a suite of independent tools integrated around a platform of web services. A modular platform that facilitates communication between each of the components and provides a great deal of flexibility to customize unique learning experiences. This is the future of learning. Moving forward into 2012, it is critical that higher education institutions keep this trend in mind when considering the future of online course delivery. An expansion in thinking when designing these future systems is required to fully reach the potential of this new knowledge revolution. Those who fail to keep up may end up like the dinosaurs they rely on.